Hi there, my name is Trolls, and welcome to yet another episode in Sound Paint. In today's video, we're going to go into our 1967 Paris clarinet. This is a beautiful orchestral clarinet, a B flat, which is the sort of standard clarinet, coming with all expected and unexpected articulations. We have multiple legatos, we have arcs, sustains, trills, short notes, all the usual suspects. But with Sound Paint, for me, it's not just that we are in the orchestral realm. That's sort of half of it, and that's what we're used to. But it's also that we can push the instruments to become something new, something sort of like new hybrid bastardization between the classical and whatever is coming down the line in terms of us allowing these new technologies to bend the sounds. And it's so cool because they're acoustic on the keys. I feel them as acoustic instruments, but I can also mangle them with sort of traditional synthesis methods to become something more. So it's pretty cool and weird to play legato instruments that are synthesized, but I'll show you both the classical and whatever is the future. What do we call it? Hybrid. The name clarinet comes from the Italian term clarinetto, which is a diminutive of another word called clarino, also meaning trumpet. If you sort of remember like really old music from the middle ages, they had these sort of reed looking things that were somewhere between a wooden trumpet and a clarinet, if you will. And that instrument is actually where the story of the clarinet begins. It used to be called a chalumeur, which was this wooden trumpet, if you will, from the middle ages. But the clarinet, as we know today, was invented in 1690 by the German Johann Christoph Dinner. Dinner sort of chopped up the chalumeur and added both a barrel and two extra keys to what was the traditional chalumeur. So again, expanding upon this sort of natural instrument. Now, I have to say, when I research these instruments, it's always a humbling process because when you start going into the history of any instrument, you realize how many iterations they've gone through. Think about the beautiful piano we have today. It's almost 400 years of evolution, beginning with the harpsichords and then becoming up to using hammers and all these sort of unique methods we have with pianos. But I mentioned that because it would take me like 30 minutes to read all the people that were involved with the clarinet. There are really, really so many people that helped sort of bring it into what it's currently become. And especially with instruments in the orchestral family and ethnic families or world, it's really clear that there are so many beautiful iterations of instruments and it's impossible to account for. So I just say that with great respect because I would actually love to go through all the different stages, but I think it would be a little bit heavy in the process. But if I may direct your attention to one of the previous videos we had regarding our alto flute Sabana. In that one, I spoke a little bit about Theobald Berm, who invented the mechanical valve for reed instruments. And I want to attribute some of that to him because the modern clarinet that we have today actually adopted some of his methods in terms of having these mechanical valves over the instrument that allows for a larger tonal range of the instruments, if you will. So you can simply play in more notes, more octaves, more keys, and it's very liberating. But it also helped to attribute to the color of the instrument as we know it today. I don't know if this is classically correct, but to me, the clarinet has a little bit of a blue color to it. Um, maybe it's because it was used in the blues and I have some kind of like background or jazz in my mind, but I also see the tone as blue. But it's also orange perhaps a little bit because it's a warm blue instrument. It has a vintage-like quality, but it's always that sort of warm, like I feel soothed by the instrument kind of feeling. And thankfully, I'm not totally alone feeling this way. The wonderful composer Mozart was actually one of the first in the classical era to adapt the clarinet. And he wrote these beautiful letters to his dad, some of them more dirty than others. If you guys are not familiar with Mozart's history, like, like check it out because he's um, not as clean in his handwriting and letters as he is in music. He definitely had a fascination for the more mundane aspects of life. But more importantly, in context to his music, he was profoundly curious about this new clarinet, which at his time was a fairly new invention in terms of the modern clarinet as we know it. And in fact, Mozart wrote the following to his dad in one of his beautiful letters. You cannot imagine the beauty of the clarinet's sound. If only we had clarinets as well. To which he composed this beautiful masterpiece. I think it's just so elegant and it really sort of goes to show how important it is for us as composers, decomposers, producers to keep exploring new sounds. 
Can you imagine the first time you heard that instrument with his mind and just go like, wow, there's so much I can do with this instrument. And that is exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Allow me to draw your attention into the door. I've made a variety of mini demos. I'm gonna show you the library in its depth and take you on a little spin into the world of clarinet, both in the classical way, but also in this new hybrid synthesized way. But let's begin here with a classical example. This was a free improvisation I made straight into the sequencer. And notice here how there's no modulation going on at all. This was literally just played into the sequencer here and it sounds like this. One of the most magical things about polyphonic legato inside of sound paint, it's not just the fact that you can play polyphonic, but it's also just that you can sort of weave between being a solo player and an ensemble. And then especially the dynamic nature of it here. Let me just play the sequence here again and hear how it almost feels like the player is swelling, but that's just the natural feel of the engine and the way all the underlying mechanics work. I love these sort of mechanical valve sounds. They have a little bit of a sort of silky percussive quality to them. Now, if this was a contact library, I would be slightly hesitant about just playing sustains because they're normally made from three to five velocity layers. But in some paint, it's 127 different velocity layers that goes into a sustain. If you notice down here in sound mode, we have dynamic sustains activated. That means that the engine is creating new sustains in real time as you move the mod wheel. Let me play a little bit with the sustains here and notice how they sort of become more and more church-like as we get into it. I'm playing way below normal octave range here. As you know, in sound paint, we don't waste any space on the keyboard. So you can play an instrument two octaves below its normal range and hear what that sounds like. And in addition, play close attention to the shimmer up here, which I'm adding gradually as we get into this sort of almost church-like kind of piece. There's also a little bit from our contact artisan brass running in the background. And there's a little bit of contact brass running in the beginning of the demo here and also had a little bit of a synth bass underneath using our JXP. But let me just try to isolate the clarinets completely here and play this mid piece here. I think it's so fascinating what happens when you play multiple notes with a single solo instrument. But because we have such rich control over the, over the sustains here, it becomes, I don't know, if clarinet and church organ ever had a baby.
In this next little mini demo, I'm using the clarinet staccatissimo. You'll notice for all our core articulations that all three microphones already come preloaded. In this case right now, I'm playing with the Decca and the White combined. But perhaps more importantly, I have the time module here engaged to my mod wheel. So you'll notice speed moving here. That means we can control the speed of the staccatissimo so you're no longer bound to always have the same sound. In fact, as I play faster and faster here, you'll notice time go up and up, meaning that the sound gets shorter. That's what happens in real life, and we can do that in the, in the door now. Did you notice how it became more sort of percussive as the speed went up here? Let me play this next example doing the same thing here. I'm gradually playing slow and then faster and faster, and I'm doing the same with speed on my mod wheel here. If you look at the modulation, you'll see the same increase. To me, it's just so natural that we use time on samples as well thereby control the length of them. I'm also doing that in this next example here using Alugada Arc Speed. So you'll notice these chords here being long and then shorter and shorter, and that correlates with time as well, again associated to my mod wheel. So what I'm essentially doing is playing arcs, but making them more and more short over time. And it's kind of wild how much you can get out of the same samples using this technology here. Now, you know how we talked about that sort of twilight zone between classical and hybrid and how you can push the samples? Let me give you a taste of what I mean here. Again, using the same program that we just heard, but this time I'm taking speed all the way down and it gets eerily cool. Isn't that wild? It's almost slowed down all the way to freeze, and you can actually do that as well. But again, that was the same samples. Let's add just one more instrument here. In this case here, I'm using a very sort of paddy clarinet on top of it, and just gives that sort of strangely eerie kind of vibe, particularly using the pitch bender a little bit here. One thing I love about the microphone positions is that we listened to the close earlier on, which is very much sort of first chair spotlight is on the player. But as we use microphones, for example, like Decca, we're further back in the hall. And when you play that with legato, with polyphonic legato, you truly have an ensemble, a clarinet ensemble. And for me, it's so neat that we both have a solo library and an ensemble library totally within itself. Check out this color here. I don't think most would imagine that this was just done with a solo clarinet. And on the flip side of the more natural sounding instruments, we can also use a couple of effects here, go down an octave here, and we have a completely new instrument, almost like a bass harmonium. Isn't that cool? It's almost like a didgeridoo or something. Another fun thing you can do in sound paint is also to control the speed of trills. Notice down here in the speed knob how it moves as we go through the different sort of speed stages of a trill. It's very sort of Gershwin-like.
And it's just super neat because it's not just always that we need dynamic control of the instruments on our mod wheel, but it's also the ability to control the sort of expressive dynamics of a trill. Yeah, you'll play a little bit faster when you get really, really excited. So use that in combination with our traditional techniques and you get a more realistic mock-up. We also have an assortment of different effects. You'll notice them here called breath and click noises. And here's one last example using the clarinet in a more abstract way. In this one here, I ran it through our gate and then I set the mix of the gate to my mod wheel here so I can control how sort of choppy I want my gate. And I'm modulating that in a similar way that I would do with a synthesizer. And that cute little sort of melodic synth underneath was also coming from the clarinet here, another legato patch. But in this case, I use offset, so I chop off the beginning of the sound, so it gets this more sort of percussive quality. And then I was like, hmm, let me try to throw in another legato instrument. And I tried both the clarinet and the alto flute and the soprano sax, but I landed on our spectralis saxophone here as a solo instrument on top of it. And to me, this is what it's all about. Expression on the keys, sound paint being the conduit from a musical thought to the actual creation in the fastest possible way. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting sound paint. Thank you for helping us stretch the notion perhaps of what music can be in the future. Thank <laughs> you.